Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO, also known as your Title King. Today we're gonna have a very special topic talking about quick claim deeds. But first, what I need you to do is click below the red subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I get many calls every single week, people saying, well, I didn't get a chance to see your video. It's because you haven't subscribed. Do not rely on us emailing it out to you or posting it on the web. You need to click the red subscribe button in YouTube and set your alerts so this way every Tuesday morning you'll get a new alert when the new video has been posted. So today we're going to talk about quick claim deeds and first what I want to cover are some of the common deeds that we see. The reason we're doing this episode is I get more and more calls every single week from people saying, oh I'm getting a property via a quick claim deed, what do I do? Or what do I look out for? And now let's roll back and remember about a year and a half ago when we caught that home stealing scam and these investors, what they're doing is they're using this infamous quick claim deed that doesn't really hold much weight in most situations. So some of the different types of deeds we will typically see in a real estate transaction are going to be a special warranty deed, which you'll usually see from a bank or an investor that doesn't occupy the property. Then you're gonna see a general warranty deed or a warranty deed. That's going to be when you have your traditional seller lives in the property, they're selling the property to uh, a new buyer and they're gonna use what's called a warranty deed. And then sometimes if a property's held in trust, you're gonna see some type of trustee's deed or a personal representative's deed if a person has passed. These are all insurable deeds that have some type of warranty being passed on to the buyer. They're all good deeds. The difference is when we start to talk about quick claim deeds. Quick claim deeds should raise a red flag. Not in all circumstances are they bad, but in most circumstances they should give you kind of a stopping point for you to do a little bit more research. So when is a quick claim deed usually good to see? A lot of times you're going to see it in a divorced situation. You're going to see it in a probate situation. So sometimes if you see a divorce, a husband or a wife, they get divorced, maybe one party is going to keep the property, the other party is going to hand the property back over to the other spouse. So they'll execute what's called a quick claim deed, taking whatever interest they may have, giving it to the other party. You're going to see it sometimes in a probate situation where there may be some heirs to an estate that aren't getting any money. So I know we have one right now where we're dealing with eight heirs to the estate. So the eight heirs are going to sign quick claim deeds over to the buyer and then the personal representative of the estate, there isn't much money being distributed, is going to sign what's called a personal representative's deed which is now insurable. In most cases, quick claim deeds are not insurable without further investigation. So we wouldn't normally see someone, a seller that received the property via quick claim deed and it's just okay to insure. We need to do a little bit more research to see why did they receive that quick claim deed. Because did you know in the state of Florida, it's very easy for you to forge a document of the seller's name giving you the property via quick claim deed and getting it recorded for $10 down at that county public records. So it's very, very scary. This is how we see more and more people trying to sell property that they don't actually own. A lot of times we'll also see these quick claim deeds in situations where they were foreclosure bailouts, where these foreclosure bailout companies have approached a seller and said, okay, deed me the property to secure their interest while they try and negotiate the short sale and then Sometimes a short sale doesn't go through and now that seller is left out of title of their property. So if you're a seller of a property watching this, never sign a quick claim deed over to anyone without further investigation. We have plenty of attorneys that'll be willing to consult with you to make sure it's in your best interest. If you're a buyer and you see a listing or something where it says buyer to receive the property via quick claim deed, stop what you're doing and automatically research why. There may be some underlying issues that are not insurable. They could be tax deed issues that may be uh, causing the property to be non insurable. So there always is a risk when you're receiving a property via quick claim deed. And in over a decade of doing this, I've only seen one property that underwriting has agreed to insure via quick claim deed because of certain circumstances that we were able to show them with the history of the property. So I hope you learned something new with quick claim deeds. Remember, you can download them online, you can fill them out, get them notarized and record them at the county. Very inexpensive to do and it could prevent you from having an insurable right to that property. You wanna be careful with quick claim deeds. So thanks as always for watching, I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe below 
and I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode of Title Tuesdays. We'll see you at the closing table. Yeah.